We got to tweet it. The Bengals get a monster human being to play right tackle as they continue their quest to protect Joe Burrow. We're going to talk a lot of offensive line today. Coming up next on Big Play Cincy. What is going on, Bengals fans? We're back with another professional installment of uh, Big Play Cincy here. Drew, I know you're excited, okay? Something occurred over the... Oh, come on. Don't uh, don't leave me out of the fun, right? Big Play Cincy. Let's, we'll get right into that then. How about that, huh? Big Play Cincy presented by Garage Beer and Tipico, right? Tipico Sportsbook. Garage Beer. Probably the best beer on the planet, right? I don't know. I mean, who can argue with it? Some are saying. Yeah, it's our it's our show. So I don't argue with a wall, right? Uh, but garage beer, typical sports book, drink one, uh, bet with the other. If you do both at the same time, don't come crying to me when you lose all your money. Uh, but hey, shout out to the uh, big play bracket challenge. So um yes, keep it on the socials. Share a Tipico bet slip of over $25. You get a free March Madness square. So uh, we may post that out here in a little bit too, uh, but mm-hmm. keep an eye out for that. Definitely, 100%. Uh, alluding to my original point here, Drew, uh, your your guy is uh, Cincinnati Bengal now. Um, what are your – give me – okay, so it happens. It's announced. Um, the Twitterverse and other platforms – are on fire. They're discussing it. What was your initial reaction after you finished tweeting out the show? Uh, I did. Yeah. Give me that. Give me that. I was hyped up, man. Um, if you guys watched our pre free agency shows, I was saying, I don't want Makai Becton. Um, I want Trent Brown. Now it didn't work out kind of the way that I thought that it would. Cause I said, maybe you're going to have to spend a little bit more money. Um, I haven't seen the contract terms, so I don't know what they spent, but I know it's Nor a one year deal. So I don't think that it's going to be a huge deal. Um, So they didn't even have to do the invest bigger that I was thinking maybe they were going to have to do. Um, But they got who I believe was the best free agent right tackle on the market. Um, You have to look at that with the eye of how the market is, right? So there's not a, there's not a Trent Williams on the market by any means. Uh, Those guys don't hit free agency. Um, you know, Trent had a little bit of an injury history last year, played in 11 games, started eight. people are talking about attitude and all that. It maybe it just sucked playing in new England where they stunk and Mac Jones yeah. was your quarterback. Perhaps. Um, perhaps. so I, I trust a, a Teddy K to get him right. Who he played with and won a super bowl with, uh, in 2018. Um, so all eyes on Frank Pollock. Once again, I think, yeah. um, Got you another gigantic tackle. You got Orlando Brown Jr. on the left, Trent Brown on the right, two mammoth human beings. Trent Williams um, is probably a little bit bigger, maybe, but I can't think of a bigger tackle combo in the league. You're looking yeah. at you're looking at Trent Brown, who's 6'8, 370, I think. Like, geez, that's a mammoth of a human being. It doesn't even compute in my brain. And uh, a lot of people, you included, uh, thought I was an absolute fool for wanting Mackay. Uh, and and to be honest, the reason I was kind of in on Mackay is because I didn't think Trent Brown was a possibility. I didn't think they'd do it. And uh, lo That's and fair. behold, and, and, and to be fair, I don't want to just put the own on the Bengals. I didn't think Trent Brown would come play right tackle for us. I really didn't. But when you see in his his press conference where he says, I have a special set of skills, Shout out Liam Neeson. Uh, I can play both sides and I'm the best at it. Okay. Sign me up. Yeah. I, and he played, he's played his best ball at right tackle. I don't have the stats in front of me, but shout out uh, Bengals. Drake posted it on Twitter. There were some, um, there were some numbers that show that he's actually best at playing um Right tackle, and I see a comment from a relative Steelers fan, a buddy of mine, says slow. I don't care if he's slow. He's an offensive tackle. Get in I'm their slow. way. Make make it hard for them to get around. Shout out to Martin. Um, they've got 17 quarterbacks over there for $4 in Pittsburgh, so I don't know what so, the hell they're going to do. Uh, so so to, to get right to your point, I mean, the 20 I'm, – I'm going back here. Let me go back to 2020 really quick, okay? 2020, he played 280 snaps at right tackle, right? His pass blocking grade, PFF, were – 
going to go with it, but uh, we like we like the man, not the statistic. That's that's our show here. He had a 73.2 pass blocking grade and a, and a dang near 70 overall. Let me jump to 2021 here, right? Uh, the man played 488 snaps at right tackle. He had an 82.5 pass blocking grade and a 70.4 run blocking grade with a 79.5 three overall grade and those are specific grades at right tackle now he played left tackle 2022 2023 uh so or sorry 2022 so obviously you can look at his pff stats for that he did pretty damn well there too so he's got experience everywhere man so he did play well at right tackle which he's going to do for us uh, health is always a big thing for a guy that size. I think sometimes it's just hard for dudes that big to stay healthy. Um, but if you get a guy that if you get him to stay healthy, man, I, I think it's a home run. Uh, shout out Tyler Zink opening a garage beer now while I watch this conversation. Gorgeous. Hell yeah, gorgeous, absolutely. New hoodie just dropped. Yeah, Drew Garrison hoodie just dropped. Yeah, New, drinkgaragebeer.com. Oh, yeah, um, baby. but man, I and a good way to scale just how enormous Trent Brown actually is. Um, I wanted to put this image on here. This is him standing in front of maybe best defensive tackle to ever play the game, Aaron Donald. This has not been edited. This has not been doctored. It may look a little bit stretched out because it's on the screen, but that is a mammoth human being. He is a yeah. gigantic dude. So I think that. Look, Aaron. I, 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 Aaron Donald's six two. I mean, that's not a short. Yeah, person. yeah. That's he's not, not a, a small person. man. No, yeah. So for him to tower over somebody like that, good lord! I don't think there's an argument either that he's the best defensive tackle to ever play the game. But a hundred percent. I mean, it's it's a monster signing, not only in the fact that he's a giant human being, but in the fact that uh, this is the best offensive line Joe Burrow's played behind his entire professional career. Now, I mean, as it we sit. Be as we sit here on paper, uh, the first line, right? We, we still got to attack depth in my opinion, and we'll get to that. But, uh, I mean, let's, do you want to just, let's just jump in. Um, he's already a bangle on PFF. I love to see it. I, let's compare last year. And this is not a dump on Jonah Williams show. Uh, I, I don't want it to turn into that. Uh, Jonah Williams faithfully served this team to the best of his ability when he was here. Uh, we've improved on that ability now, but just let's compare the two's 2023 seasons, right? Jonah Williams had a pass blocking grade. This is PFF again. Okay. Take it or leave it, but that's the metric we're choosing to use of 57.9, a run blocking grade of 54.0 and an overall grade of 58.5, right? That was our starting right tackle last year. Correct. Yeah. Last year, Trent Brown pass blocking grade of 70. Three. I'm rounding up just to give it a round number. Run blocking grade of 80.7 and an overall grade of 80. So off the rip on paper, we have drastically improved at the right tackle position, which a few days ago, we were all scared nobody was going to be playing it. We thought you were going to be playing it, Drew. You're in your backyard doing sets. I put the tape out there. You um, sure did. No, no offers materialized yet. Um, I'm actually... Um, I might get out there maybe this weekend if I get a chance. Um, I, I can play defensive tackle. I can play nose tackle. Okay. That's where the Bengals have the biggest yeah. need now. So maybe I'll put a little bit of tape out there of me working the trenches on the other side of the ball. Uh, okay. Maybe I'll tackle my wife or something like that. Um, I've seen that movie. I'll ever sign a waiver but <laughs> um, you know, so I don't go to jail. Yeah. But I, I think that you're looking at a situation where this should be the best line Burroughs had since he's been in the league. Sure. Um, he's yeah. playing with Maybe the best tight end that he's had since he's been in the league um, yeah, with what Gusecki can do um, if he can put it all together. So I think that I, I can't I can't help but be happy with it when we're talking strictly on the offense. Now, oh yeah, yeah. What's going to happen with T Higgins? Don't know, but I know I that if number nine's there, and number one's yeah. there, we got a shot with anything. Absolutely. But I think that when you're looking at strictly the trenches, um, I would personally call Dalton Risner. To play left guard, yeah. Um, I, I not like trying that. to knock on Cordell Volson, um, but I just think that when you're in a situation like this where you're paying T the franchise tag and this is an all-in, let's go win it with this fucking young crew. 
yeah. slipped up there, a little F-bomb action. Yeah. Um, well, let, let's go do that. Okay, cool. So that's an all-in move. So go go get a Dalton Risner to play left guard, and now you got Volson as your sixth man off the bench. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's probably going to get you know this year to improve, and I think that he he definitely will and can. Um, but I don't think that. Um, Oof, he's got. He's going to be. He's terrible either. You know, what I, mean? so I think that. That's that, and that's that's what it is. Um, I think that you're looking at. You're looking at you know. Huge guys, yeah. high grades. If you if you like the PFF crowd, um, mm -hmm. Trent Trent Brown does very well in one on one situations, which is something that the Bengals ask their tackles to do a lot. Uh, we'll watch games against a Miles Garrett or a TJ Watt and say, mm -hmm. "Why the hell aren't they sending help? Why aren't they chipping? Yeah. Why isn't there a tight end? Whatever the case may be, oh. they for whatever reason that's how the Bengals do it. So Trent Brown excels in those one-on-one -on -one situations. So I think that that's a good fit. I think he was the best fit of a veteran right tackle on here because I have wanted no part of starting a rookie. You can still draft a tackle at 18 now. That's fine. I had no interest in starting a week one rookie right tackle next year when you're signaling to everybody that we're going to go all in. Now, yeah, he's on Instagram playing locked up by Akon. You look at T's Instagram story, it's I'm locked up. They won't let me out. Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen with that. I still think that if he plays football, it's going to be in stripes unless somebody overwhelms them and blows them away. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. Uh, That's okay. I'm you good? Child, child, child issue. That was, <laughs> I'm not honest to God, dude. Uh, the T situation is what it is. I'm, I don't even want to freaking get into it. I do, however, want to talk overall i mean this offensive line you you talked about cordo volson right and he I mean, he graded out uh, pretty poorly pass blocking i think he allowed like five sacks he's young though right so maybe this is his year to improve but i do really like the idea of, of bringing in another guy for him to learn under right i, I mean i mean he's been here this be what his third year right so he'll, he'll get it yeah. i mean he'll, he'll adjust he's young uh, but, uh, if we're looking at the same situation next year with the same type of play, I'm done letting him grow. You, you know what I mean? So well, uh, that's what it is. This is, this is make it or break it. Yeah. 100%. And I think if, they're going to let him I, do that. I, I think so too. If I was pulling the strings, mm -hmm. I'm calling Dalton Risner. Somebody, I think it was Paul Dana jr. I uh, had some reporting or a podcast, I think, where he said that like it wasn't yeah. a culture fit with Risner. So maybe not, but. Oh, really? Okay. I don't know. I don't I, know about that. I heard. I heard I heard a rumor of somebody was like, why don't we put why don't we sign Makai Becton too and put him at left guard? But then I'm like, he's six seven, man. He's Guys big that guy. big don't normally pay. Yeah. He, he's a big he, guy. You know, they, they they don't usually play left guard. Um Wedge Gordon with a shout out. 2K Ron got some. Oh, just gets golf dead. Let's say they land Fugawa, BB Zinter, boom. Oh, depth is now nuts. Oh, I yeah. I do like that. Unbelievable. That incredible uh the comment that i meant to bring up is damn 2k ron got some lighting tips from andrew fox miller he's Guys, giving you look, props for the lighting wedge i got a light in it this light i can't see a damn thing right now i'm blind like look <laughs> if it looks like i'm looking places i don't know what i'm looking at this light is so close to my face and so bright i my eyes are gonna fall out halfway through this show I appreciate the compliment, though. <laughs> hey, Sacrifices that, we make for showbiz, can you, baby. Can you bring that other comment up again? Or can you find it? Wedges? Or this one? No, no, the, the Fuaga one, yeah. Let's say Land Fuaga, Baby Zinner. I mean, good God. I don't know if they're taking three, right? But, like, there's a lot of people who, like, are under the assumption that right tackle's fixed now. And that's okay if that's your level of understanding right now. But, like, we got to have depth, man. So, like... Taking Brown does not and should not stop this team from drafting a tackle at 18 or in the second round, man. If we if we draft Fuaga, whoo, oh, it's a patch. Trent Brown is a patch. Yeah, um, for sure. And unless that's he how right tackle has been. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even if he does play outstanding, he might go get that contract somewhere else. He could, um, yeah. If we draft a rookie and that rookie ends up being the heir apparent, a hundred percent. But you also don't have to go tackle at eighteen now. You can maybe get your yep. tackle in the second round if you think it's a guy yeah. that needs a little bit more polishing, and you can go best player available. By some grace of God, if Brock Bowers falls, you can oh, snag God. him up. 
That would um, be gorgeous. I'm still team trade up for Brock Bowers if you have to, but um, your team, ch- your team trade up, like legitimately trade up. I like that. I don't mind that. Um, I, I just think the big piece here that people need to realize is, I mean, the guy we brought in, Trent Brown, is this isn't the the previous years your new bodyguards in town. No, no shade to Lyle Collins. Like Trent Brown is going to be legit if he's healthy like this dude is going to be legit at right tackle he great he is graded out graded out better than any offensive lineman we currently have on the roster so uh it's i mean it, i'm so excited like i love all our offensive linemen but <laughs> trent is just bringing another level to this offensive line um and you're right dude uh if if we end up in a situation where we're like staring Brock Bowers in the face or staring Johnny Newton in the face. We can take him, dude. We can take Johnny Newton. Yeah. We can take him and not have to poop our pants because it's not a right tackle. Johnny Newton, Sheldon Rankins. Oh, nipples are hard. Mine are mine. I love to say that. I think so. It's not a kid show. Yeah, uh, I see the comment. Uh, four of the five offensive linemen have a Super Bowl ring. I tweeted that out last night and got Nuts. fucking massacred by Chiefs fans. Oh, like who just cares? like hundreds of them. Yeah, it was ridiculous. I've moved to it, and look, I'm not a block people on Twitter guy. You guys know me. I like to give people shit back. If they make fun of me, I'll find a reason to make fun of them. We all have a yeah. good laugh. It's fun. I can't do it with these Chiefs fans, dude. It's obsessive and annoying. I'm just blocking them. I, they're coming under tweets and shit that have nothing to do with them at all. And they're just talking crazy. So I was like, dude, I can't do it anymore. I don't block. I, it takes a lot to get me to block somebody. You got to say something like really out of pocket about me or my family or something like that. <laughs> but I can't, I can't do it, man. I, I can't stand it. If I say something about pizza and they're like, Oh yeah, that's why your fat ass has no rings. I'm like, what are you talking about here? Like, what are we doing? So I'm sorry. They're just catching blocks. Um, but forget about him did you see trent's presser you said like did you watch his yeah. press conference yeah dude, dude, he's awesome talk about a no nonsense guy like sometimes i was like oh he might get out from behind the desk and beat the shit out of james rapine for just yeah, you better watch your a... questions james <laughs> like but it was it was like uh it was like are you worried about him uh drafting a guy uh and him coming in and he just says no i was like oh shit yeah <laughs> Like this guy. He's like, why do I care? I got a one year deal. Yeah, this guy, uh, this guy's all about football, man. Some of his answers were so short and to the point that the uh, the media in the room almost didn't know how to react because usually a guy kind of rambles a little bit. He was just like, Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, this yeah. is what I'm good at. And I was like, Oh my god, this guy's all football. Like this guy, co- I gotta do this comment. Johnny Roll Papp it. says that Photoshop of you from that little kid is hysterical. So, so a Chiefs fan got a hold of a picture of me and Photoshopped it to make me have a super fat <laughs> yes, face. That was funny. Um, I called him a pussy, and then I guess maybe he's 11 is what oh, some people no. are saying. Oh, um, no. I just doubled down on it. I was like, yeah, that's old enough to be a pussy. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. I, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if he's actually 11 or somebody's just saying like that looks probably. like a, a child's profile. But yeah, um, probably. if you don't want your kids to get called a pussy on the internet, <laughs> don't let them have Twitter. Don't let them have Twitter. Sorry about it. They, they, um, were, but, they were going in on you. They were, <laughs> were going in, dude. I tweeted it, and I like fell asleep on the couch for a little bit and took a nap. And I yeah. just woke up to chaos. And I was like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Yeah, they were going in, dude. Whatever, man. You can't. Well, hey, if that's if, you if can't that handle it. Really Eleven. Yeah, you can't handle it. Get out of here because this is this is a place for dogs. All right, this is not a place for the <laughs> lighthearted. What else you got going on here in the football verse? We can sit here and talk Trent ba- Brown for forty minutes, but uh, at the end of the day, it's just we, we got a big man. Big man. What do you got? What are you laughing at? Somebody. It's something that I can't say. Um, okay, on don't. The screen, but I just got a hilarious <laughs> don't get us canceled. Let's I'm just going to point out that yeah, what I can I I will not say it, but I just got a hilarious text from Dad. Oh no, uh, yeah. just a comical hilarious text from Dad. But I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna put it out there right now. But I do got him on the screen, Dad. I love you. You're about to kick ass and everything you got going on. Love text you, to death. Dad. Yep. Um, yep. So yep. when you look at 
the way that everything's shaping up now, you can take Johnny Newton at 18. I want to come back to that because Johnny Talk Newton, it. to me, is Geno Atkins 2.0, yeah. but maybe a little bit better. And maybe I'm doing the crazy draft comparison or whatever, but that, excuse me, ooh, garage beer burp. That dude is a dog. So interesting, you, you bring up... Um... Johnny Newton, Zach Taylor was at Texas's pro day today. Yeah, uh, looking what at are Andre you, Sweat, Sweat, and uh, potentially a big fall. Byron Murphy. I mean, those are those are some guys that could come in here and fill in, right? Sweat maybe later on. Byron Murphy would be a faller to us if he's there. Uh, yeah, if he fell. Yeah, I mean, you could you can get some talent at defensive tackle in this draft if you want to roll into that dude i mean matt it's a Newton kid's show Murphy man. It's, a fam- and- <laughs> it's a family program man shout yeah. out to him st taddy's day hung out with him for a little bit man so yeah, how we did cool st taddy's day how cool was-, was that day oh amazing amazing we got to get matt on here and ted ted we got to get ted uh on here to talk about it and talk about the season but but un- unbelievable event obviously since he had i'm backwards here uh, we got some some stuff here, some footballs. I hung up some of these hats because I'm proud to sport the Cincy hat anytime, any anywhere. Uh, the event overall, though, unbelievable, dude. It was like 2,000 people there, over 400 people. Uh, mine's peeling a little bit. I got it. Up. But over 400 people got the tattoo. Drew, I'm not going to ask you to do a handstand. I know yours is on your calf. Um. Drew and I were on the mic running the field goal event. That was just a tiny part of it. Um, what I mean, talk your experience with it? And and for those that are listening that maybe aren't Bengals fans uh, or were not at the event or are just here to watch us and maybe not as in tune as the Bengals it, as as we are and some of the other audience members. St. Taddy's Day was a, an event put on by Ted Karras in the Cincy Hat, who raised money for adults with disabilities uh, to find comfortable housing. Uh, and essentially what they did is they threw a giant event where you could donate, uh, buy auction items, uh, players signed and, uh, over 400 people got this, this, uh, where's my camera, this tattoo I'm showing off here. Uh, and, uh, Ted was kind enough to foot that bill. So back to my original he statement, was literally, though, I, I mean, like what, what, what did you think of it? Dude, the hilarious thing was after it was all over and everybody left, we were all still there. Yeah. He was literally writing checks to all of these people like literally had a checkbook like oh okay, like he up. was paying it <laughs> like literally writing checks and i'm thinking in my head i'm like dude his his bank is gonna like flag this right yeah like, hey, just... dude, did you write 40 checks on uh saint patrick's day like did you just get hammered matt uh matt schultz just commented forty five thousand dollars raised yeah is that raised 45 grand that day does that in, that include hat sales, hat and sales, uh, raffle items? Unbelievable, yeah. dude! That's crazy. Forty-five grand straight to the village of Marici, not even counting Joe Burrow popping in. I don't know True. if that counts or not, but te- so since Talk this it. whole thing started off, we're talking to Matt from the Cincy Hat. Help, you know how how can we help? What can we yeah. do? And we're like, hey, Ted's getting this damn tattoo, and he's like, no, he's not. Ted doesn't have a tattoo. He's not doing it. He's not doing it. He'll, he'll do this, all that. His wife and, didn't want him to get it. <laughs> yeah. His wife was there. Super, super nice lady. Awesome. Lady, um, yeah. And I guess he said he was at dinner on a, uh, maybe on a free agent visit um, with Burrow. And he was talking about if he could get people to raise from, from the team to raise 25,000 extra dollars yeah. that he would get the tattoo. And Burrow was just like, Swoop I'll just in. do it. Swoop I'll in. give you 25 grand to get the tattoo. He said he texted him um at the event. Yeah. It's like during the event and said, I hope you don't chicken out. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean it was it was awesome. We got to do the field goal thing. If we made fun of you, um, it was all in good fun and good spirit. Well, you probably um, we they probably deserved it if we made fun of you. So it was a uh uh, uh an engineering showcase um as yeah. we repaired and tried to keep upright yeah. the uh pvc pipe goal posts we um i had to get ratchet straps out of my truck there was a there was a lot of duct tape involved um yep. but we made it work um yeah ted needs Graham? to keep his day job uh of playing center 
Graham Hastings won a Graham $500 Hastings. gift card to Jeff Ruby's. How many did he make? Eight, six, or eight? He hit six 25 yard field goals six. in a row. I couldn't six do one. Things. I couldn't do one. Dog. I, I couldn't either. That guy, that guy is a dog. So um, it was, it was a, a completely, completely mind blowing event. It's crazy that we have been. Mm -hmm involved with it from the ground floor and it turned into what it turned into met a lot of really cool people um that you know see me on the internet and yeah. um, actually recognize me in real life nobody tried to punch me in the face that yep. was good Always um good. so you know it I was, do it was a great day man wedge gordon's comment utilizing child labor efficient efficiently uh it was not our child labor we did not hand select these children to work that there were children event. Though. yeah um they were having a good time though. So yeah. Uh those kids are dogs up. too. Yeah, dogs. Absolutely. The wind was atrocious. So if you if you put one through the the Ted Karras homemade uprights, I mean the the CFL, the UFL, the XFL, they need to have your phone number because like it was like hundred mile an hour winds out there. It was unbelievable. I gotta address this situation. All right, Kieran mm. Horn was not robbed. He'll tell you <laughs> that he made a kick in the sudden death round against. Um, he fought. He he went to he went to sudden death with somebody else. Then Graham he came did. in like, no, nah, I got this. Kieran's kick was wide right. Uh, don't believe the tabloids. Don't believe anything that you may see on yeah. the internet. Uh, it was uh, fake cool news. Call. Fake news. Yeah, Kieran. It was unbelievable. I don't remember that other guy's name, but Kieran is a, a Bengals fan from Ireland. Uh, who come to find out played professional, I'm going to call it soccer because <laughs> this is America and we, we only call football football. A professional soccer player in Ireland. Uh, so him out there kicking was a little unfair, but he gets into this kickoff with a guy and they, they alternate best of five. And it came down to the last kick, didn't it? It did. It oh, did. Um, I can't remember the guy. Great head of hair. Uh, Good Do you know who he, had hair. he looked like uh I'm gonna forget his name, so I won't go there. Uh but uh yeah, unbelievable lettuce, unbelievable flow. Uh can't beat it. But ultimately, Graham Hastings, uh former army officer, actually I come to find out. So thanks for your service, Graham. Uh wins the five hundred dollar gift card to Jeff Ruby's. Um, I mean, dude, there was just so much there. Uh Skyline was there. Uh Garage beer, Skyline partner. Uh, the uh, we actually the met the entire thing. I mean, was was sponsored by Garage Beer. The taps were going nuts. Uh, we met the guy that runs the Garage Beer social account. Uh, we met investors and plenty of people associated with Garage Beer. Uh, not only is the beer good, but the people are good there too. So that was really, really, really cool to meet them. Yeah, there were green garage beers flowing. It was yeah, it was awesome, man. So if, if you were there, I'm sure you loved it. If you weren't able to make it, um, I'm sure you saw a lot of the good uh, content that went on there on socials. Yeah, um, did 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 some camera spots with uh, the the big guys from Cincinnati Bengals talking into the jungle. Yep. Um, I was actually on Andrew's great camera that made me look better than I am until uh, that child got a hold of it and face swapped it and made me look fat. It's a very funny or picture. Fatter. Um, <laughs> But he, he you know, I showed it very... to my wife and she said, take me, take me now. <laughs> it's a very good edit. I mean, I don't know how he did. Your I'll give him credit. Shots. Like there was no warping outside, like the background, like he did. It was very good. I don't, I don't know. Uh, one, I do want to hit this dude. Zach no. Taylor showing up out of nowhere was awesome. I was literally about to say that. Okay. So Zach Taylor shows up, uh, doesn't like hide behind a podium or hide behind a desk and like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm the coach. No, he's just in the crowd. Dude, he was just walking around like I, I I didn't see him. We were outside. Uh, but how cool is that? Plenty of people got pictures with him. Plenty of people talked with him. Uh, obviously, Ted Karras is there. Uh, Zach Taylor shows up. Trey Hendrickson shows up. Uh, we were kicking it with Brad Robbins, one of the coolest dudes I've ever met dude, now that we've actually met him. Brad Robbins is so cool. Yeah, that's he's just a dude. Like he's just a bro. Uh, it was awesome. Talking about golf, talking about other stuff. Uh, Brad, I'm gonna clip this and tag you. Uh, see you on the show in the next couple of weeks. Let's get you on here. Uh, I do want to address something though. Um, Trey Hendrickson, massive human being. Yes. Huge. I, I, I don't know what I was expecting seeing him in person out of pads. Uh, but I always say like Trey Hendrickson, 
for the amount of aggression he plays with and the productivity he puts out on the field in a very violent game, I always said, dude, he just looks like a fishing buddy, like someone you just hang out with. Uh, but then he showed up, showed up to this event out of pads. And I was like, oh, that guy's a stone cold killer. He's massive and could throw me across the room. So hats off to that. I didn't realize Trey Henderson was that big. He was cool too. Cause I was like, dude, I don't mm-hmm. want a picture. I don't want an autograph. Yeah. I just want to tell you, I fucking love you. And he was like, let's fucking yeah. go. I'm I think like, yeah, so. What, that's exactly what happened. I walk, we both walk up because we were trying to avoid getting in the way. Hey, Trey, thanks, man. I, we don't need an autograph or picture. Thank you very much. I just said, Hey, I appreciate what you do for the city. Drew comes in, shakes his hand and says, I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to tell you, I fucking love you. He's yeah. Like, that was go. great. Yeah. yeah was like, All right. Yeah. 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 It was Dude, great, like man. Zach Taylor signed a shirt with me on it. Mm-hmm. Like what, what the hell is life? That was crazy. Yeah. Drunk Bengals fan gets the, the Drew Garrison garage beer shirt signed that, by is Zach. Is that who Taylor. did it? Okay. I yeah. didn't know who did yeah. it. Drunk yeah, Bengals yeah, fan's yeah. a legend, dude. Darth um, so Bengal yeah, awesome. in the chat. My first garage beer that day. Welcome to the club, brother. Oh, I love it. Do oh, I it's have, not your last. Oh, Drew. It's not Look. your last. Check it out, dude. Look. Oh, you did it. Yeah, good call. Did it. Got it did up it, on the it. wall. Yeah, dude. Yeah, we need banners. I, banners or something. I love garage beer since way before. I, I do want to say, I do want to say that you like when we were blue collar bangles and uh, like just starting out, like you would show up on screen drinking it. And I, I didn't know what it was yet. So like you are, it's like in your heart, like you are like yeah. to the core. I'm a rookie here that has fallen in love with it, but like, it's been your drink. I'm telling you this right now. It's getting ready to get warmer out. We got summertime yeah. coming. It's lawn mowing season. Go out there, mow the lawn. Yeah. Get the stripes looking right. Get yeah. the edges looking right. Don't oh. Play around. Be on Gorgeous. your shit. Be precise. But oh. as soon as you're done, crack a garage beer lime after you mow the grass and sip on it while you're admiring the work that you just put in. And tell me you're not a happy person. Yeah. Tell, you, no. you, it, it, you will be. It can't, it can't, it can't go any other way. Um, so I, I, I found garage beer last summer and I've just been hooked. Okay. Ever since. My father-in-law's a, a diehard, uh, shiny blue can, no free ads. Uh, so I'm this summer. My goal is to convert him from the shiny blue can to garage beer, the regular garage beer. I think he'll really like it. So, um, hell I got the, the uh, pool and the pool in the backyard. That's the only thing I'm buying back here outside of liquor is garage beer. So. Uh, two things I've been confirmed. I've been, um, I've been oh, accused no. of stealing Tony's comments. Um, I love you, Tony. I'm not trying to do that. Um, but it is a solid all day beer too. Yeah. It's a, it's a beer that you could drink all day. Did um, Victoria just wife, volunteer you for tasks painting? Well, John asked, do you bring the same enthusiasm with grass cutting as you do the trash cans? And I'm going to tell you this dog. I went out Saturday to mow. I'm pulling the mower out. I'm getting the edger out, getting the weed eater out, getting all, yeah. all hyped up. Ooh. Dave must have caught wind because who pulls his mower out? So welcome to spring, Dave. It's on. Um, but she's the wife said it's spring cleaning season. Sip your garage beer while you paint. Um, I will be painting my house this weekend. Outside? Like the outside of it? Uh, no, no. The inside. The inside. <sighs> okay. The outside's right. like siding. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so I go to St. Taddy's Day. I come home. She has started painting shit. That's um, that's unbelievable, so, Victoria. Here we I don't go. Know why, I don't know why you would do that to my boy. Hey, can I um, real Shout quick? Out Martin. What is it? Shout the out Martin. <laughs> it's real time. I was because love it. Yep. Love it. Love it. Hey, can we talk about something that's really going to make you angry? Um, yeah. 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 Um, what are your thoughts on hip drop tackles? Dude, give me a break. <laughs> they're really they're really taking this to the league meeting on Tuesday. They're really voting on trying to ban the hip drop tackle, which is just taking more defense out of the game of football. So now essentially dude, oh, oh man, you got what, me to the millions I, I of people watching, you're welcome. You have a pissed off Drew Garrison now. What the hell are you supposed to Can do? I, now let me read if the ball carrier this. gets in front of you. Yep. Let me read this to you, okay? The definition of a hip drop tackle, right? Okay. All right. What exactly is a hip drop tackle? All right. One. 
Nobody defense, knows. Uh, exactly. The defensive player approaches and wraps his arms around the offensive player. That's a tackle. Well, the upper half of a tackle. The player becomes dead weight while dropping to the ground. A tackle. <laughs> While the defensive player hangs on his body, often lands on offensive player's legs. A tackle. Let's see. Are there? Is there another step? No, no, no. That's it. So basically, if someone is in front of you and they're a little faster than you, and the only way you can get them is to grab onto the hip and pull backwards and try to stop their forward momentum, the proposal is 15 yards and an automatic first down. What the hell are we doing, dude? Are you <laughs> kidding me? Bro, an, listen not, to me. Look at, they tried to make they tried to make Logan Wilson public enemy number one. Look at these graphs. Is this like official NFL jargon? That's on USA Today, but everything being quoted is from the NFL. Dude, like uh, I, this is my favorite part. Let me just, this is, I'm going to pull it out. Check this out, guys. This is the animation of a hip drop tackle. Get it. Keep, get out of here. So like, that it, defender, <laughs> now, if this rule gets passed, that defender now has to say, oh shit, he beat me. Go score a touchdown. The Mark Andrews play that started all this when Ian Rappaport decided he was going to try to make Logan Wilson out to be like a jerk murderer. All Logan Wilson could have done was say, okay, go score a touchdown, Mark Andrews. Yeah. If you run, if you run a sub four five, you're gonna score 40 touchdowns a season. You're good. And dude, I can I can hear it now. I can hear it now. Yes. I tweeted. Give me the this play earlier. by play. All right. Here's Jim Nance, right? Jim Nance. Okay, they stopped Kansas City on third and eight. Here right. comes Rumble. Oh, I don't know, Jim. Right. There's a flag on the play. Oh, they got him with the hip drop. First down, Kansas City. It's amazing how Patrick Mahomes was able to pull that off. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I love how you wrap it in, Patrick Mahomes. Absolutely love that. Yeah, it's well, it's exactly. He, Tony Robo just ejaculates when Patrick <laughs> yeah, Mahomes hands a football that's, off. That's how, that's how it is. It is. Oh, oh, he's tackled. He's stopped at the five. Oh, I don't know, Jim. Looks like we're going to be at the one. Oh, that's I, and your tweet summed it up perfectly. That's exactly how it's going to happen. My tweet was there's there's surely there's nothing wrong. There's nothing that could go wrong with this. What an abomination. Uh, you and I are both advocates of player safety. We want we want our guys, we want everybody in the NFL uh to be injury free. Nobody wants injuries. All of but, them. However, if we start putting penalties on methods of tackling outside of cowboy collars and flat out diving for quarterbacks, knees and things like that. Got it. And crown of the head. Got it. All that. If we start putting penalties and tying them to natural movement, the game might as well have flags on their hips. It's ridiculous. Um, shout out BJ McKinney. Um, he just tagged me in a tweet. I'm going to read the official statement Do from it. the NFLPA um, regarding the hip drop tackle. Shout out to BJ for bringing this to my attention. This is from the NFLPA now. The players oppose any attempt by the NFL to implement a rule prohibiting a swivel hip drop tackle. While the NFLPA okay. remains committed to improvements to our game with health and safety in mind, we cannot support a rule change that causes confusion for us as players, for coaches, for officials, and especially for fans. We call on the NFL again to recon reconsider implementing this rule. And that you know what that is? That's a long professional way of saying, don't screw this up because it's yeah. impossible to play football without tackling like that unless yeah. you just want to let guys score. You can't hit them high anymore. You can't hit them low anymore. So now – you can only tackle them from directly in front, from below the tit, above the and the the subcockle area. I, I'm I don't know what a subcockle is, but even even in that in in that scenario, right? Like, say you hit somebody from the side, Derrick Henry. Say you hit Derrick Henry from the side, and he's running top speed. His forward momentum is going to drag you like a corpse. Another. Yes another three to five yards if you just try to hang on for dear life and not put your body weight backwards in an attempt to stop that forward momentum. 
you like it's like oh i'm from the side i better just let him go right like there's there's gonna be scenarios where players just throw their hands up because they're like i don't know if i can hit this guy you know what i mean and and people are gonna get hurt you remember when they started the the whole you can't land on the quarterback with your body weight after you hit him thing yeah yeah which what the hell? You know what yeah. happened? Defensive ends and defensive linemen started blowing their knees out yeah. because they would hit the quarterback and try to like jump try and stay it. up so they didn't land on them. And they're popping their knees out of place. They're blowing ACLs. You're going to get guys now. What's going to happen, dude? Like they're going to try to get in a different position that's completely unnatural while yeah. a dude that runs a 4 2 is trying to get in the end zone and they're going to try to get to the side on this guy to make it. It's just ridiculous, dude. That, yeah. Like, the- Ty- Tyreek Hill is going to break the touchdown record if this rule goes into effect. Just, I mean, that's a silly example, but like, I mean, think, think about it, right? Like, dudes get hurt. It sucks. I yeah. hate it. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. I don't care if it's the player I hate the most in the league. I yeah. don't like it. I don't, I think injury karma is a real thing when people get on Twitter and start talking shit about injuries. I don't Agreed. do it. I don't like it. But let's, let's face the reality of the situation here. The fact of the situation is these guys sign up. They get paid millions of dollars to play football, yeah. knowing the risk that they have. They yeah. risk life and limb every single Sunday. And I get, okay, horse collar tackle, shouldn't do it. There's a there's a different way you can bring that guy down in that situation. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, if yeah. you want to talk about a hip drop tackle and you play that play on where Logan Wilson tackles Mark Andrews and unfortunately Mark Andrews gets hurt, there was nothing else Logan Wilson could do in that situation yeah. other than just put his hands up and let him run into the end zone. Yeah. There's nothing else you can do. This is a, if this goes through, if this gets approved, dude, it is going to be a disaster, and it's going to be a very, very, very big hit to the watchability of a football game because everybody's going to think it's fine now. Maybe people agree with it until yeah. your team is driving or your team gets a stop with 30 seconds left at the 50 yard line, and it becomes fourth and eight, and they say, "Oh well." That was a hip drop tackle. Now they get 15 yards on a first down. They get a couple more yards. They kick a game-winning field goal. Your team loses. Now you're pissed at the rule. And it's going to happen to damn near every team. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's going to be a game-deciding call. Like it's, it's all. That's all these rules lead to is game-deciding calls, man. I mean, we're, we're looking at defining what a catch is. Do you remember that? Like, what's a catch? Now we're trying to define what a tackle is like, and it's just, it's getting, it's getting so out of hand. Like it's so dumb. I did do yeah, this exactly like four months ago, right after well, the, the Baltimore game, Tony, I'm back on my bullshit. Cause they're well, talking but, about doing it, but now they're actually talking about implementing this crap. Right. I mean, Drew and I, we don't agree on everything, but like we, this is something we like, like passionately agree on. Like you just got to let these guys play the game. Like it's, so dumb. You want to you want to toy around with the kickoff? I don't love it, but it's fine. The kickoff's yeah. still there. I think they're talking yeah. about starting guys up longer. The kicker's back by itself. Different rules. Okay, that's fine. You're mm-hmm. keeping the kickoff, but you're going to try to change it. Whatever, I guess. Mm-hmm. But dude, we're talking about something that happens all just constantly in the yeah. NFL. And when when it happens to to the Mark Andrews thing and all the Baltimore fans are on Twitter is talking about how dirty Logan Wilson is. I'm yeah, like, Hey, go look at Roquan Smith's highlight tape from the season before. And you'll see yeah. him do that about 30 times because it's how dudes in the NFL tackle. And when Logan Wilson hits Odell Beckham jr. And he gets a little bit hurt. It's a clean hit. He hits Lamar Jackson. He gets hurt. It's a clean hit. He does yeah. the Mark Andrews thing. It's a clean hit. And here's like Ian Rappaport. Like that's three for Logan Wilson. Like he's out there trying to collect them. They immediately took that and he turned did. it into a way to attack this type of tackling. He and it's been a that. conversation ever since. And now yeah. they're going to go out there and they're going to put this rule on the table. And I'm telling you right now, every football fan, I don't care if you wear stripes. I don't care if you wear whatever the hell the Kansas city thing is. I don't care if you're a Steelers fan, Ravens fan, Browns fan, whatever team. You're going to find out how bad this rule can screw you over. And as a oh, yeah. football fan, I just hope it doesn't happen to you at the worst moment possible like it seems to happen when they do all these new rule changes. It is a complete and total disaster. And there's 7 million people watching this right now, so Roger Goodell, you're probably one of them. Kiss my million. ass. Funny you do bring that up. We're we're over 700 people live right now. Uh, love to hit that 1,000 mark, but we understand sometimes uh, when we switch days, 
people's schedules have to adjust. I do want to want to bring up the uh, Squares giveaway. Giveaway. I want everybody, if you're on your phone right now, what the heck is my computer doing? Uh, go to, now this guy's a Browns fan, so don't hate me. His name is McNeil, but he's a really funny, good guy. His, his Phenomenal is, Twitter follow. Yeah, yeah, he's absolutely hilarious. His at is reflog underscore 18. So it's capital R. E F L O G underscore 18 Tipico Sportsbook is doing an awesome squares giveaway. Share your Tipico bet slip below on his post and get a chance for some free squares and the chance to win up to $620 in bet credits. So $25 bet slip equals one square. $50 bet slip equals three squares. $100 bet slip equals five squares. There's a photo right below on his post. Kind of lets you know what's going on. Uh, so uh, go to reflog underscore 18 McNeil. First of all, follow the guy. He's absolutely hilarious. hilarious. Almost as funny as Drew and I. Uh, and then take advantage of that typical uh, sports book play there. Uh, I, I, I want to, I messed up my, my phone here. Um, but uh, we got to talk about this. Uh, because we, we signed the guy. And uh, I don't have the image. I didn't send it to you. So this is this is sort of unplanned. So I, I'm doing this very, very, very poor. But can, can we talk about Trent Brown's tattoo real quick? Uh, Trent Brown, Cincinnati Bengal. Um, oh, mature content. Reddit just warned me. Uh, dog? <laughs> Is that dog? What is that? That's, that's, that's the definition of a dog. I mean, he's got a tattoo of himself flexing while while getting it. While two getting ladies it do things. Falash, yeah. I believe, is the radio appropriate word. Um, that's dog mentality. That's, that's, a dog, I mean. that's a dog mentality. The man knows what he likes, knows what he wants. <laughs> Uh, and hopefully he applies that mentality to the football field. And I just surprised Drew showing that. So, uh, but, uh, it just, it, it had, I did not it, see that coming. It had to be brought up. It really, really did, uh, to, to come full circle here and come back to Trent Brown. The tattoo had to be talked about. It, it, it's, um, what you have tattoos, right? I mean, what, what is your I most, what is your most like, Oh crap. That's a tattoo. He got tattoo. Um, people like the uh, the Bush beer can. Uh, I know we're a garage right. beer show, but yeah. um, this this tattoo here um, is a Bush beer can. No free um, ads, but it says Granddad underneath it because uh, my my grandpa died, and that Bush beer can may as well be his portrait. Um, there you he go. always had a Bush in his hand. Yeah. Um, when people see that, they're like, "Oh shit!" That's so that's. It. That's yeah. That's your oh shit tattoo. Mine, mine. I have Easy E tattooed on me too. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> you have some. I'm. I'm. And not I that I'm. Dead Osama bin Laden. Yeah, not that I'm picturing you without clothes on, but I, I, I'm like working my way through your tattoos that I know you have, and I'm like, oh wait, that one's good too. Oh wait, that one's good too. <laughs> You've got some masterpieces on your body. Mine, mine some is basement like, tattoos. Yeah, mine's like the the prison style deployment tattoos on my arm here. Uh, that some specialist in the army who aspired to be a tattoo artist was given away for free in a tent somewhere overseas. Uh, but but neither of us have that. I mean, that's that's like I put there's there's the Mona Lisa. <laughs> there's the Sistine Chapel. I know I said that incorrectly. Right. Michelangelo. Uh, there's the, the statues of David carved of marble. And then and then coming in right behind them, right below them is Trent Brown's. Felish masterpiece. It's Felish. it's unbelievable. And it needs to be shared with the masses. So I had to bring that up. But, you know, we're not a kid's show. You if know, you get, think it's so cool, it. why don't you go get the same tattoo of yourself in your Bangalorean costume? Oh, I did find the coolest tattoo artist on Earth uh, over. You might, at, you uh, might uh, no, by the wife first. No, yeah, yeah. No free ads, but Black Skull Collective tattoo shop up here in Dayton. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I would have a wife if I came home and said, honey, you're not going to believe the deal I got on this tattoo first. Let's look at it. She would leave me. 
<laughs> it's just you in the costume. Yeah. Flexing. <laughs> I don't know what the numbers mean on his arms, but I think it's just like I mean, his area or something. I don't know. I don't know. But dude, you gotta be a special in a good way kind of person confident to put that on your body and go out there and kick people's asses for four quarters. Tony says do it. Okay. How much money you got, Tony? You you foot in the bill? We could do uh we could do the uh if you raise so much money, Ron gets the tattoo of himself. I can't getting no because because the it'll take twenty four hours. Name a number. <laughs> it does not matter. If you if we raise a hundred thousand dollars for Sensi Hat, they will raise four hundred thousand dollars in twenty four hours because <laughs> of the insanity of that artwork. <laughs> it would be unbelievable. I don't know how I'd look my mother in the eyes if I had that on my body. I, no, no offense, Trent. Love you, Trent. You're six eight two or three seventy. Don't come and, and blow my house down. Um, but uh, like un, unbelievable, dude, like unbelievable. Hey, man, it, we're at the 50 minute mark. I don't want to get out of here yet because I'm having fun. Uh, you want to go through some comments? Yeah, dude. Good comment day. Let's go for it. Um, Let's go through some comments. BJ has already started the GoFundMe to cover your tattoo. Unbelievable. Um, McKinney. Shoot me a message. Um, Rebecca Moore. Rebecca Fro. <laughs> oh, that's Fro. Okay. Tune in next yeah. week while Ron packs up all his belongings. <laughs> it's just for a new fan. Hey, that's going to be she showed you pulling all your shit off the wall. Yeah. <laughs> and she's cool as shit, bro. If you want to, she's funny. Follow her if you're not following her. Uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Dude, 100%. Awesome. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> BJ also said when you're that big of a human, you can literally do whatever you want. It's like, yeah, that's true. You, like, couldn't, what are you, gonna do? you couldn't tell me. There's two things in life that that if I had, you could not tell me to do a thing. If I was a millionaire billionaire, right? My bought nobody. Nobody could tell me anything. And if I was 6'8, 375, if you talked to me in a manner I didn't like, I would simply push your face six feet into the earth. That's it. Couldn't tell that's, me anything. That's probably true. Dude, imagine me with like oh, F would, you, you would, money. You would be just insane. Me <laughs> me with just F you money or me with just F you size. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be a problem. Yeah. Um, you know what tattoo no. I would get? I would get and probably wouldn't even need money to get. Some sort of garage beer theme tattoo. Wouldn't even need money for it. I'm, I'm, I'm that committed to the brand at this point. It's, it's good beer. Uh, another comment from my wife. She clearly <laughs> listens to me uh, bitch a lot and picks up game. All season long, as the fan yeah. said, take take game decision-making away from the refs, the NFL. Absolutely. Let's give refs another chance to decide the game. And yeah. that's what a hip drop tackle is. It's another subjective call. Yep. It's yep. another judgment call in the hands of these guys who can't figure it the hell out already. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for NFL bringing us. NFL last year was terrible. <laughs> so bad, so bad. Awful. Thank you for bringing us back down to earth, Victoria, with a football related comment after my tangent. Yeah, we were getting we were getting into <laughs> fellatio um, territory. So Tony says I would be insufferable with with FU money. Could you? Yeah, dude, it'd be bad. Yeah, it would it, be it, bad. It it would be bad. Oh, that was Darth. I'm sorry. I'd buy a oh, tank. No. I'd have a tank or something like that. It would just you couldn't. I would just. That would be my everyday driver, a tank. And then on the weekends, I would fly my Apache helicopter to Kroger. That's what I, that would be unbelievable. Dar says Drew with FU money would track down the kids that Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's always their go-to with me. It's like, Oh yeah, you fat ass. I'm like, mm -hmm. not that I'm, I mean, I'm not in great shape, but I'm not that. Baby. Who's in great shape. <laughs> Nobody's in great shape. Who cares? Uh, Chris Babb says, does he have the Cincy stripes in the middle of that tattoo? Um, I not going to lie. I don't remember exactly what that comment is related to. I'm sorry. The uh, um, probably Trent Brown's tattoo. He needs oh, some maybe in there. <laughs> maybe you get the Cincy logo on the other bicep. Well, and he's got he's got a football helmet uh, on in the tattoo. Yeah, he's maybe wearing he's, a helmet. He stripes the helmet. Uh, I did hear that he very much likes the striped helmet. And in, in a comment uh, from another uh, media person, who I'll leave nameless because I can't remember their name, 
who told it to me. Uh, but uh, it, he was quoted as saying that he loved the helmet. So well, I don't blame him. We've got the best helmet in football. So striped helmet is badass. It's unbelievable. It really is. I don't have one. My help. My this. I've got the. I've got the inverted yes. version. Yeah, I've got the homemade version here. Um, the T. Higgins signed helmet. I, do you? I so, to, speaking of helmets and things, I was having this discussion with somebody at work today. Uh, the uniform potential that's occurring. Do you know what the NFL is saying that these teams are allowed to do now? I guess the color rush is gone. Do you know? I didn't know that was gone league wide. I know that the Bengals took their color rush out of their uniforms. So the uh, rotation. Bengals are doing it. So what? What do you know? What their goal is? I guess are they? I know we don't. The Bengals haven't said like, oh, we're bringing back a throwback. But like, what? What's on the the table? Um, I just want to point out that Kane said I have an inverted Johnson, um, and taken out of context, oh. that's a hell of a comment. Um, yeah, but what I hope the Bengals so. So teams have um, the way that I believe it's set up. They have their primary homes, they have their primary aways, and they can have yeah. two alternates. So usually the Bengals will wear one game. They'll wear the orange jerseys, which I love. Orange jerseys, back is, black pants. Just is that so deemed an alternate? That is an alternate. Traffic. And then they had the other slot, which was the color rush. But slot. last year they got approval from the NFL to wear the white helmet with their primary white uniform. Okay. Um, so they don't need the color rush anymore. So they took the color rush out, giving them one more slot for an alternate. And what people are hoping for, myself included, is the old throwback sure. stripes on the shoulder. Uh, you've probably seen the mock up a thousand times of Twitter of Burrow and the the like nineties throwback. The early and, Chad Johnson. Yeah. 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 The early, right. Like Carson Palmer wore it for a yep. year and yep. then they yep. switched. Um, I would love that. I would love to see the Still, old throwbacks come back in and they have the helmets the same because yeah. a lot of the, a lot of the issue with the alternates were before were everybody had to wear the same helmet. So teams yeah. are saying it's not worth it to get them painted or rewrapped just for one yeah. game. But now the, the helmet thing has also changed. You can, I think you can have two helmets and, um, and so for it opens people, the door. People that don't know uh, who was this that told me this um, Shane Graham, the Bengals helmets are, are painted. The stripes are painted on. They're not yes. decals. So it's not so, a vinyl wrap. Yeah. So for people that don't know that those stripes, it's all paint. There's no vinyl. There's no 3M decals on there or anything. So um, so the hope is they do have an alternate slot open. The hope is they bring back those 90s throwbacks. Um, and so there's you know what? I'm gonna just come out and say it. It'd be nice to see a good team finally wear those jerseys because through the 90s they yeah, stuck. Yeah, it would. Yeah, it would. So there's the difference then. Okay, they got to prove to wear the white helmet with the actual white uniform rather than it just being tied to a color rush. So that's, I think. Yeah, that was last year. So like against the Rams, they got to wear the primary yep. whites. Um, yep. So I think that they haven't announced it yet. But, dude, if there's one thing, one thing that the Bengals do is listen to their fans. Oh, my God. The Bengals have a pulse on Twitter. Zach Elizabeth. Taylor's already admitted that he has a burner, and I hope to God it follows me because that would me be too. awesome. Um, I hope so too. But I, ho I hope it does, and then I also hope it doesn't at the same time because of the uh, things like talking about Trent Brown's fellatio tattoo. But like at the same time, how cool would that be, dude? Elizabeth he signed a shirt with me chugging a beer and said it was knows, awesome, and my shirt said Zach are. Taylor made me drunk. So Do you know what he did? He said, "Oh, who? Why is this picture of Jonah Williams chugging a beer?" Is what he said. <laughs> Everybody says he I look like Jonah. <laughs> he signed it. I, Elizabeth said she has an account out there too. Elizabeth Blackburn, uh, for those who don't know, is the absolute mastermind behind a lot of this stuff elizabeth blackburn emily parker shout out her that entire social team uh kills it the new admin kind of on fire kind doing of on good fire. New, new Bengals <laughs> twitter admin is doing good uh, i shout I, out to you i messaged the individual the other day uh the main account uh, I was going to post something uh that was on another platform but i anytime i post something uh it's Bengals players doing something from say their Instagram or their Twitter. I always message the main Twitter account and say, Hey, uh, are you guys going to post this anytime soon? I don't want to post it and spoil your social media. 
uh oh, Ron froze up. Plan, and they'll say, "No, nah, go ahead," or "Or yes, can you hold off for posting it the next day?" So, oh, am I frozen? You're you're am back now, but I think the Bengals were throttling you a little bit. They might have known, but any, but like I was saying, anytime I'm going to post something from another of their platforms, I ask them. And uh, I was talking with the admin, uh, and I did let them know that they were killing it. So the new admin, we're we're in good hands. Let's just say that. The Bengals official account responds to you on DM. What a flex. Not, not uh, every time. Yeah. Don't let me flex here. And if the Bengals listen to our show, please don't not respond now that I've said that, but, but they... respond to me. I've got ideas. <laughs> no, but I can fix this thing. Long, long story short, the new admin is going to have a great draft season and season. Like we're in good yeah. hands. Yeah, I think the coolest thing related to Bengals um, producers and admins was the uh, the Minnesota game last year. I was lucky enough to sit in the front row, and oh, um, yeah. one of one of the Bengals, um, somebody from the Bengals social team, sent me a message from their personal account, and it was just a screenshot of a video of me. And he was like, "Is this you?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's nice. like, "That's crazy." So that they put me in the video, and the funniest thing is, it's me mocking the skull chant. <laughs> Right as we're about to win the game, because there was a bunch of Vikings or Vikings doing fans it. around, like doing all the skull. So the Bengals posted me like on their official pages, just mocking the Minnesota Vikings. So that's like a career Look, highlight for me. Bengals admin Emily Parker, uh, Elizabeth, anybody with any kind of power. All I ask is for one day of credentials. One day, Drew and I, one day of credentials. We go a game day, right? We we I've go applied. down. I've not applied. I don't know how to do that. But you've got professionals in there, right? In the call. You've got professionals in there asking these questions. And I I I posted this on Twitter. It's like a putting a regular dude in the Olympics to run the four hundred along all the Olympic athletes. Put an idiot in the bullpen. And let us <laughs> ask stupid questions, man. Just one or two guys, Drew or I, but put us in. You want to win, put Booby in. Throw us in the bullpen and let us ask some questions of these players. Put some smiles on faces. Let us walk around the sideline, interview people. Come on. Come on. I applied for credentials. Um, I don't know how that works. I'm I don't just remember begging. what it was. I'm just begging and the- pleading. I got the I got the email address and I applied and I was like, hey, I write for Cincy Jungle, like blah 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 blah. They emailed me back. They emailed me back like three months later, like, sorry, we don't know I missed your email, but uh, no. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> Appreciate sorry, it. Sorry, bud. You were in our junk folder. No, that's what happened. I, I don't. I don't need it. I don't need you to like build me up. I don't even. The other media people in the room can ignore me the whole time and be like, why is this guy here? We don't want him here. James might throw me a bone or he'll be like, I'm with my friends. Uh, Ron, you got to go over there and sit in the corner. I don't care. Are you in costume? I don't scenario. Maybe if, if that's a stipulation, yes. If they say sure, but you got to wear the suit done deal. Got it. Okay. I don't, I personally would rather just it be me asking uh, Sam Hubbard a question. Right. Then him looking at me like, well, hey, man, you guys really want me to talk to this this guy in a costume? You know, I would rather it be me. But Bengals, just food for thought. One idiot in the bullpen to ask the real hard-hitting questions. Like, Trent, hey, Trent, show me your tattoo. I don't know if I could do it because, like, let's just say I'm in there. It's early yeah. November. Joe okay. Burrow's up there, and I'm just like, hey, Joe, uh, my birthday is November 11th. <laughs> Do you plan to attend my birthday? Yes. Party? But that's it. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I mean. And he'll be like, Haha, next question. That's hilarious. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's funny. Like, that is funny. And then, <laughs> and I don't know. You got, you got like, uh, not Tyler Dragon. He's not here anymore. Who's got credentials? Someone with credentials. Then they go on and ask the other question. Oh, you're right. There's you're, oh, there's oh, another oh, guy oh. whose name I refuse to state because I don't like him. Okay. James. No, it's not James. Love James. <laughs> Met James in person for the first time. I know. I'm kidding. Uh, at St. Teddy's. a super cool guy. For those that don't know, we are co-workers with James Rapine. So. That's hilarious. 
It is funny to say out loud. That's why this whole thing that I keep tweeting out is funny because these guys are just professionals and blah, blah, blah. And we're just dudes that could buy microphones on Amazon and we do a show together. Hey, have some respect. All right. Mine's from Guitar Center. Mine is not. Mine's from Amazon.com. Straight, uh, straight to Guitar Center, baby. I did go to Best Buy to get the laptop. So, but uh, yeah, man. I don't know. Great show. Um, I appreciate yeah. all the love that everybody showed me on Twitter uh, with everything going on. I appreciate all the love from St. Yeah. Taddy's Day, all the the pictures we took and the hands I shook and people saying that they think it's funny when I make fun of burners. Um, yep. There were definitely people in that room that I know for a 100% fact hate my guts, and I think that's hilarious too. Um, I like to make people uncomfortable when I can. Um, so that's all I got for today. I don't know if you got anything else. Um, I think it was a good show. Shout out to yeah. the chat. Shout out to everybody watching worldwide. Uh, those watching, not commenting. Um, shout out Millions. to Dad. Love you to death, man. Uh, we had the text from Dad graphic on this week, so I got that fixed. So that's good. Um, so, yeah, man, we're going to get out of here. I'm going to go uh, knock the shit out of uh, uh, a weird couple of days, and things are going to go on the up and up. I cannot wait to get back in here next week. Uh, should be good for Thursday at 8 next week. Um pending any changes, but everything should be good. Um, we haven't done this once. Tony brings up a very good point. Um, if you could please oh, like yeah. this stream, subscribe to our channel. We're not good enough at asking for that um, like we should be. Um, I did say I'm credentials. ridiculous when we get to a 1,000 YouTube subscribers. I'll give away something stupid. Um, yeah, I don't know what yeah. that. So um, yeah. that's all I got, man. You got anything else before we get up out of here? I don't, man. Hey, like subscribe big place sensi we are going to be bringing some like this is guys this is the ground floor we happen to launch big place sensi in the off season lots of fun stuff to come in the regular season big place sensi brought to you by garage or brought to you presented by garage beer and typico sports book drink one bet with the other if you do them at the same time don't come crying to me when you lose your money uh, I do want to throw out the numbers. We were flirting with a thousand in the eight hundreds today. Live uh, viewers love it. Uh, I think if we were on our regular Thursday programming, we would have exceeded that, succeeded that thousand. But uh, love all eight hundred plus of you that are here. Who day? Who day? <laughs>